everyone. This is the mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today. I hope you are all doing well. So I wanted to quickly share my thoughts about Wendy Williams, her documentary and why I believe that Sharina Hudson and not Kevin Hunter was responsible for or largely responsible for her mental breakdown. So I watched the two part lifetime documentary last week and it was very sad to see Wendy in her state of decline. Um, but it was also frustrating and a bit irritating to see Wendy in that state because Wendy kind of comes off as male identified. And I think that her personality changes and her depression is not just because of the alcoholism and dementia. I think it's because she doesn't have a man, even though I think she was smashing her manager. Well, I think his name was Will, um, who happens to be her physical type. Um, I think that Wendy's mental health decline is partially because of the fact that she doesn't have a man currently to claim as her own. If you guys remember when Wendy first got a divorce, she made it her business to broadcast her dating journey um, or her rebound journey on her TV show. She wanted Kevin or the audience to see that she was still desirable. So she was acting really desperate for a while on her TV show, trying to hook up with these men who she felt like would replace Kevin. And so I feel like she's the kind of woman that constantly needs a man in her life to feel valued and validated. A lot of people are saying that um, it is Kevin's fault that Wendy lost her mind. And while I do agree that there is some truth to that, I would not completely attribute Wendy's precipitous decline to just Kevin alone. Kevin's an easy target because he's not that attractive. He was broke when he met her. He's a black guy. He's a cheater. He's a grifter and a user. And, you know, I understand why he's an easy target for these accusations as far as people blaming him for Wendy um, falling off the way she did. But I am a huge proponent for personal responsibility and accountability. And the situation, you guys have heard about this lady named Risa Tisa or Ressa Tess. I don't know how to pronounce her name. And how she allowed herself to be lied to by her husband for years because she needed to have a man to the point where she would ignore all the red flags in that relationship. And many women do this. I talked about this before with Shirley Strawberry and Arion and many women who are ambitious and successful but seem to f lose their common sense and lose their um, intellect and their critical thinking when it comes to a man. And most of these women are male identified or pygmies. And I forgot to mention Denia Jackson, who's like the epitome of what I'm talking about. So, you know, I'm a huge proponent for personal responsibility and accountability. I think Wendy was already insecure, damaged and broken before she met Kevin. If you guys watched her documentary a couple of years ago, she went through a lot of trauma um, as a child, as it pertains to her physical appearance. And she also went through trauma in her dating life, being used by men, being sexually assaulted by a man at one point, um, you know, just having a really rough time of it in her relationships with men. And so I think that Kevin just took advantage of how fragile Wendy was at the time that she met him. She was about to be 30 years old. She was desperate to get married. And so, you know, Wendy is seven years older than Kevin, I think. Kevin was like 22, 23 when he married Wendy. He was pretty much a baby in a sense. I know he was a grown man. He was, you know, of legal age, but a 23 year old man who doesn't have his stuff together is not a good option for marriage. And I think Whitney Houston learned the same thing. She married Bobby right before she turned 30. He was like 22, 23 also. And we saw how that turned out. So a lot of older women who are male identified, they tend to settle with men who don't have as much to offer. They tend to settle with men who are abusive, disrespectful, disloyal, and so on and so forth. Wendy had a lot more money, experience, resources, and success than Kevin. She was not a pushover, nor was she a damsel in distress, in my opinion. Wendy is actually a very intelligent, astute, and ambitious woman who had deep insecurities about her self-worth. And this is why I believe that she was so desperate to get married and stay married in spite of her husband's decades-long affair. Kevin had been cheating on Wendy for more than half of their marriage. So Wendy knew about Kevin's cheating long before Sharina Hudson decided to have his baby. And like many successful women, I think Wendy put up with his infidelity because for her, Kevin was not her entire cake. He wasn't her whole life. He was the cherry on top of her cake, not the whole cake. 
If you guys remember when I discussed a Melody and Martell situation, I stated that for the most part, successful and ambitious people are not affirmed, validated, or fulfilled by romantic relationships. They're in love with their careers, their social status, power, fame, or money that they acquire by their own efforts. And this is why alpha types, men and women, tend to attract partners who are not as confident, outgoing, successful, or ambitious. They tend to be attracted to or they partner with quiet, submissive types. And this applies to both men and women. Both Kevin Hunter and Martel Holt had long affairs with unambitious, simple and submissive women who didn't want the limelight and who would not want to compete for attention. Okay. I think Sharina Hudson and uh, Ariana, both Virgos, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I think that Sharina is a Virgo also. So, you know, Throughout this ordeal that Wendy was going through with her husband, I couldn't help to notice some of the parallels in Melody and Martel's situation. Wendy and Melody have a lot in common. Uh, they're both intelligent, charismatic, ambitious, independent, and attractive women. And they both married men who were better as background players. And then these men ended up pretending to be bosses or managers of their wives. Both Martel and Kevin had long affairs with women who were the complete opposite of their wives, right? And most men cannot handle the idea of their wife being the boss. So a lot of times they find ways to restore the balance of power by becoming their manager. And how do these men convince their wives that they need them more than they actually do? They do so by coercion, manipulation, deception, and sometimes even force. It never made sense to me how a man who works for his wife becomes her manager. Mary J. Blige did it. Kelly Clarkson did it. Tony Braxton did it. Monique is currently doing it. Beyonce's doing it. Like, when do you ever hear about successful men allowing their wives to become their managers? And their wives are like, you know, regular women who don't have degrees per se. If they do, their degree has nothing to do with, you know, them being managers. So most men cannot handle the idea of their wife being the boss. And so they find ways to make themselves necessary in their wives' lives, right? You know, unlike successful women who marry men who are not on their level, um, successful men do not allow their wives who are not as successful as them to manage their lives. All they allow their wives to do is to manage the home, their children, and their physical appearance. But for some reason, these successful women feel obligated to give their husbands control over their lives because men do not like to share power in general. Most of them like to feel like they're in charge of the women who really don't need them. Um, and women are more inclined to seek partnership as opposed to dominance than men. Um, a lot of men would rather dominate their partner and be in control of their partner than to share equally in the responsibilities and the power dynamics of the relationship. And I think this is one of the reasons why, um, you know, black men and black women have historically butted heads as far as relationships go, because, you know, here you have men who want to be submitted to, but they don't have the wherewithal, the resources or the leadership qualities to lead their family to anything but dysfunction, poverty, distress, and abandonment. And I'm not saying all black men are like this, but historically, you know, when black women were in a position of subservience to their husbands, they ended up in really precarious situations by way of their husband's actions, either his addictions or his womanizing or his physical abuse. Like, you know, a lot of black women have learned to not trust black men um, as far as giving them all of her power because they've seen what happens when you give men who have no power in society power over your whole entire life. You become a shell of your former self. You become a victim of his abuse. You become a slave in a sense. But it's not always the case. There are some good black men and good men in general who, <laughs> who are good leaders and good fathers and good husbands, all three. Um, but it's rare. It's getting rarer and rarer by the day. So yeah, these successful men do not allow their wives who are not as successful or educated as them to manage anything but the home, the children, and their physical bodies, right? But successful women feel obligated to give their husbands equal power and control in their relationship. And Melody did this with Martel. Even though Melody was the one who passed the test for the builder's license, she made Martel an equal partner in her marriage, 
which is not a bad thing if Martel had those qualities. And a lot of women, unfortunately, you know, they want to do the right thing by way of their partner. They want their partner to feel like they're equal and they respect them as a man. And they, you know, they want to share responsibilities and share power, but men don't like sharing power. They will always find ways to wrestle power away from women, either by forced or weaponized incompetence or manipulation or, you know, uh, cheating and infidelity. A lot of these men, um, don't like to share power in general and they like to feel like they're in charge of women who really don't need them so a lot of ambitious women they remain single because they don't want to give up their individual power to a man and unfortunately for many men um, a woman is useless unless he has power over her mind her body her money her spirit and her resources that's one of the reasons why pimp culture is so pervasive in almost every country in the world to this day Women are a commodity to be bought and sold by men. So anyway, it is very easy to blame Kevin Hunter and his affair for Wendy's downfall. But as I thought about it, um, I started to think about it a little differently. In the past, for you guys who've been listening to me for a while, I've discussed how men win the game of love and relationships and life in general by using women's jealousy and competitive nature against other women to keep us uh, divided and fighting over the scraps of men that are left. Um, And I talked about this topic as it pertains to Arion and uh, Shirley Strawberry or Denia Jackson and other women who would rather suffer in shame and indignity than to let go of an abusive, dysfunctional, irresponsible, and uh, disrespectful man. And it's not out of love and devotion. It's because they don't want the next woman to get the prize. According to Wendy Williams, and she didn't say this, this is based on her actions and the way she spoke about her husband. He was the prize in that relationship, even though she was the primary breadwinner. She was the one still coming home and cooking and cleaning for her husband because her mother instructed her to do so. Because Kevin, um, you know, he said that he wanted a wife who would cook for their family. And that's a nice thing to want for your family. Um, a lot of men want a traditional wife who cooks and cleans and all this other stuff. That's great. But why didn't Kevin take it upon himself to become Mr. Mom, right? To compensate for the lack of affection that he thinks his wife was giving him. Um, a lot of women who are who are married to, dating, or involved with really busy and successful men, they tend to pour into themselves or they pour into their children for validation. They don't go out and find another boo thing um, to replace their husband. That's not common. It happens, but it's not very common. Unlike women, men are more inclined to try to find an emotional replacement for a wife who is absent because of her work. So instead of Kevin become Mr. Dad or instead of Martel becoming Mr. Perfect Dad, Super Dad, Mr. Soccer Dad, the perfect cook, instead of him using his free time to become the best dad and father he could be to his children or to his child, you know, Kevin decided to become the best boyfriend he could be to another woman. That's the main difference between men and women who are married to really busy, ambitious, and successful partners. I'm not saying that, um, you know, women don't cheat on their husbands who are always busy, always at work, always in conferences and traveling. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But men like Martel or Kevin or uh, Derek Jackson are a lot more inclined to replace whatever their wife is missing with another woman, as opposed to, you know, using that uh, emptiness or that feeling of emptiness to become a better husband or better father for their children. That's just the way that they are, right? And so I think at some point, Kevin felt neglected or abandoned by Wendy, just like Martel felt neglected or abandoned by Melody. Um, Because when you're dealing with ambitious people, you're not the source of their happiness or their fulfillment, okay? Um, Again, you're there, not to say as an accessory, but you're not the main character in their story. They are. Their careers are. Their success is, right? And I'm not saying it's wrong to be ambitious and career-oriented. And I'm not casting aspersions or ambitious people. A lot of times, victims of trauma by way of abandonment or emotional abuse or neglect or some other, you know, trauma they've experienced as, as children, they f- find something to validate and affirm them as a way to cope with the trauma. And for some people, they use relationships to cope with trauma. These are people who are serial daters and womanizers. And some people, they use their children to cope with trauma. They, some people use their career. Some people use whatever, violence, right? Or alcohol, drugs. So we all have coping mechanisms for trauma. I honestly think that um, Wendy, her trauma may have been feeling replaced by her younger brother. I did notice that they have some sort of sibling rivalry going on, which is not uncommon 
for Cancerian children. A lot of Cancerian children have a difficult time sharing their parents' attention with younger siblings. So I did notice that her and her brother have a snarky type relationship. And so I think that Wendy may have, you know, sought success and fame and notoriety and accomplishments and wealth to compensate for feeling neglected, for feeling worthless, for feeling unattractive, all those other things. So I'm not saying that justifies uh, Kevin cheating on her for over a decade. I'm not saying that at all. But, you know, a lot of people, when they're married to ambitious people, they tend to feel neglected and abandoned. And so they find someone or something else to compensate for that void. So that's fine. I say all of that to say, um, I think Wendy Williams had a mental breakdown partially because Sharina had a baby. Well, largely because she had a baby. I think it's about 60 to 75% of what her issue is. Until Sharina had her baby, I think Wendy kind of looked down on Sharina. Sharina was plain. She was not successful. She was broke compared to Wendy. And so Wendy wasn't really threatened by the likes of Sharina. Um, wives and mistresses compare themselves to each other. Um, they try to find out why their husband is with this side piece or the side piece try to, tries to figure out why is he married to her and not me. They both size each other up. I think Wendy and Sharina at some point both sized each other up and they tried to make sure that they did whatever they could to keep Kevin happy for both of them. Kevin's happiness was the most important thing. Kevin getting what he wanted was the most important thing to Sharina and Wendy because they were both competing against each other. And this is why I warn women about um, playing the made the best woman win Hunger Games with these men. Because these men can extend this game out for decades. You have three women, four women giving you, competing with each other to give you everything you want. Why would you stop playing that game? Why would you cut off women who are willing to sacrifice their dignity and their peace to give you everything that you want while you're giving them a percentage of whatever you feel like giving them on that particular day? Why would you stop the game? Like Kevin was seeing Sharina for over a decade. So when he's stuck in there for over a decade trying to win out over someone who was younger, who was more fertile, meaning she could give Kevin the children that Wendy couldn't give him, who had time on her hands, like you're not going to win that game. You're not going to win a game of triangulation with a cheater because they will try to extend the game for as long as possible. And if one person drops out, you're going to feel like they settled for you. So if Sharina would have dropped out of the race or this game with Wendy and her husband, Kevin would have punished her for that. He would have emotionally abused Wendy because he didn't have access to his mistress anymore. And he would have replaced his mistress with somebody else. So it's not in a woman's best interest to play the ring around a rosy triangulation hunger games with these men. It's not. So yeah, until Sharina had her baby, I think Wendy Williams thought she had the upper hand in the relationship because she had most of what Kevin wanted and valued which was money, status, a career as her manager, right? This dude from Brownsville was managing an A-list celebrity. He had access to millions of dollars, a nice car, mansions, you know, a career. He was the man while he was with Wendy. He's not the man with Sharina, but Sharina, like Arion, centered her life around Kevin. And so Kevin felt more important to Sharina than he did to Wendy. And so he found affinity with her. Same thing with Martell and Arion. You know, a lot of men are not impressed with a woman's success unless he wants to use that success for himself. Otherwise, it's useless to him. If he can't benefit off you being successful and you having money and you having clout and fame, he doesn't really care about it at all. Because as you can see, Kevin and Martell cheated with women who are the opposite of their wives, who are very humble, simple, private, not humble. I'll say humble, just for the sake of this conversation. Humble meaning they're not very ostentatious. They're not famous. They're not celebrities per se. They both have notoriety, but they're not celebrity famous. They're not like Wendy and Melody who both like, you know, fame and money and success and being uh, popular, which is fine. But most of these men don't care about how successful you are unless they can use that success to level up themselves. And usually leveling up means using your resources to flex on other men and impress other women, period. So I don't think Wendy was threatened by Sharina until Sharina kind of sort of made a checkmate move and leveled the playing field by having Kevin's only daughter to date. Wendy says she always wanted a baby girl, but couldn't because of fertility issues and other health problems in her career. So the day that Sharina had her baby was a day that, in Wendy's eyes, she lost her position as the headmistress in Kevin's life. 
now, not only did uh, Sharina have Kevin's time and attention and his heart even, she had a biological tie to him. Whitney used to always brag about her ring, her status as a wife. And, you know, she was doing this because she was competing against Sharina. And mistresses don't like being taunted by wives. In fact, um, a lot of long-term mistresses, not jump-offs or one-night stands, a lot of uh, long-time mistresses, long-term mistresses are in competition with the wife and they low-key want the wife to respect them for not getting pregnant and ruining their whole situation. The mistress at some point wants the wife to be grateful to them for keeping their man happy. You guys have heard me say in the past that men tend to cheat with women who make it easier for them to stay married. So at some point, Sharina may have felt like she was doing Wendy a favor by being Kevin's mistress because Wendy was too focused on her career to give Kevin the time, attention, and validation he so desperately needed. Like Martel Holt, Kevin didn't like the fact that Wendy was fulfilled mostly by her career. Like Martel, uh, Kevin could have felt like he wasn't the most important thing to her. And I don't think he was. I think Wendy's career was the most important thing to her. Her son was secondary to that. And her husband was probably a close tie for second, third place. So I think Wendy treated her husband like a cherry on top of her pie, her cake, an accessory. Um, he was like an appendage, a side dish, not the entree of her life. And so like Martel, Kevin cheated with someone who had nothing better to do than to service his needs emotionally, mentally, physically, and sexually. Um, a 10-year affair is a girlfriend, okay? Sharina Hudson was Mar was um, Kevin's girlfriend, just like Arion was Martel's girlfriend. So as a side note, I, I don't understand how women tolerate men who cheat, but then draw the line when the mistress gets pregnant. A man can have unprotected sex with a woman 100 times and not get the woman pregnant because she's not ovulating, okay? What's the difference between not having a baby after having unprotected sex and having unprotected sex and having a baby? It's the same act, right? But it's different outcomes. So this is not by deliberation. It's just by probability. There are cheaters who track their mistress's menstrual cycles to make sure she doesn't get pregnant. Because in actuality, you know, there's some point in cheating if you can't get the most pleasure out of it for most of these men. So I really need women to stop saying... I can forgive him for cheating, but I draw the line if someone gets pregnant. Like, it's the same act. Having sex unprotected and not getting pregnant is the same act as having sex unprotected and getting pregnant. There's different consequences. And just because a mistress doesn't get pregnant doesn't mean she wasn't trying to. If your man has taken those types of chances with another woman, his attraction to her is higher than his respect for you or your relationship. He's willing to risk your health and your stability for someone who he says he doesn't even want to be with like that. So anyway, I think Sharina was the main cause of Wendy's breakdown because Wendy felt like Sharina won the game of life. She had her husband, his baby girl, and Wendy's money to finance her luxury lifestyle. So if she wasn't so torn about Kevin's cheating for the 10 years of their affair, why did she put up with it throughout her entire marriage? Wendy's mental breakdown was caused by the idea that another woman had a one-up on her. And because most, if not all, pick-me women dislike and distrust most women, that was worse than Kevin's abuse and exploitation. Many women are so male-identified that they'd rather be treated like crap by their boyfriends and their husbands than lose him to another woman. Even if he treats her the same way, it doesn't matter. As long as... <laughs> I'm not saying that it's wrong for a woman to be devastated if her husband or her boyfriend gets another woman pregnant. That's awful. That's the worst form of betrayal to me. Um, but to me, it's just as bad if a man cheats and the woman doesn't get pregnant. What's the difference? It's just a matter of chance. So during the documentary, Wendy cried about missing her family. And I believe her. To me, this means that she did not want to divorce Kevin. And she still loves him. And she only divorced him because of the baby which she admitted. So his decade-long affair did not bother her as much as people think it did because while he was cheating, Wendy was still climbing the ladder of success. She was blazing trails, making history. So whatever he was doing with his little side piece was insignificant because she still had the ring, the lifestyle, the status, the family dynamic, the success, the fame, the power, the money. That is until Sharina pulled a checkmate and had the one thing that Wendy could not buy, a baby girl for her husband. 
And Wendy would have had to subsidize the lifestyle of her husband's side baby with alimony and child support and a percentage of her company. So essentially, Wendy was financing her own replacement, which is a whole lot more painful than Kevin cheating with a nobody who was dependent on him for her lifestyle. I'm not saying that Wendy is wrong for feeling the way that she did, but her mental breakdown has a lot to, more to do with her own fear and paranoia about not being good enough than Kevin's shenanigans. Women who put up with abuse and disrespect for years love the idea of the relationship more than a man. And so they get dragged. And in the process of getting dragged, they lose their joy, their soul, their heart, and their identity. I think a lot of Wendy's memory loss is caused by depression and heartache. I remember when I got my heart really broken and I could barely remember what I was reading. I couldn't remember names and dates and words, you know, time didn't exist. I felt discombobulated. Like many heartbroken people can attest to going through a similar experience. Wendy found joy in her work. She enjoyed providing for her family, taking care of her family. She bought her family, her parents, a condo before she turned 30 years old, right? Um, you know, she enjoyed taking care of her family by doing what she loved. But once she lost that nuclear family dynamic that she was raised with, and then her mom died, I felt like her heart was not in her work anymore. And I think the same thing happened uh, with uh, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown. You know, he put her through so much crap that she didn't have the strength to meet the demands of the music industry and her stardom. And like Wendy, you know, uh, Whitney developed a codependent relationship with Bobby to the point where if he was, if she was having marital issues, it affected her performance and her headspace. And she couldn't focus on her work because she was worried about what Bobby was doing. Now, there's going to be some listeners who accuse me of being a pick me and male identified because I don't think that Kevin is solely responsible for destroying Wendy's life. Kevin contributed to her decline, okay? But Wendy's low self-esteem is the reason why she ended up with a man like Kevin in the first place. Wendy's low self-esteem is the reason why she ended up with a man who had nothing to offer her in the first place. Her low self-esteem is the reason why she put up with an affair for 10 years, okay? Her low self-esteem is the reason why uh, she was desperate to find another man as soon as the divorce was finalized, okay? Her low self-esteem is the reason why um, she's suffering now. And another thing, you know, I think that Winnie does not want to be around her family because she doesn't want her family to stop her from indulging in her vices. She wants to maintain full control and autonomy over her life. Winnie's a very bossy, dominant, and controlling woman. She knows what she wants. She says it like she means it. All of a sudden now, this man has the ability to come in and destroy an empire. No, Wendy was already very fragile, mentally and emotionally. He just took advantage of her insecurity and brokenness. And this is why it's very important for both women and men to have themselves together, not just financially, not just socially, not just academically, but you really need to make sure that you are whole healed person before you get involved in a relationship with somebody because narcissists, parasites, and users are attracted to your trauma. They're attracted to your brokenness like a magnet. They can't help it. And so Wendy was food for Kevin. She was. But at the same time, she was happy to serve herself up on that plate. A lot of women are happy to submit to a dominating, domineering man. They feel like that's their role in society and life. And that's fine. If you want to completely submit to your guy, to your man, you know, and lose your identity in a relationship, that's on you. But please don't act like, you know, a helpless victim once the S-H-I-T hits the fan. Please uh, see yourself as an accomplice to your own self-destruction, like Risa Tisa or Ressa Tessa, whatever her name is. And, you know, I'm not trying to shame women for wanting love. I'm not trying to shame women who want to believe in the ideal of this perfect knight in shining armor. It is what it is. But I have an issue with the reason why. Like, why do you need this man to save you from yourself? Why do you need this man to be something that he's not? Why are you ignoring the red flags, right? It is not about the man. It's about you as an individual. Why are you making these types of choices and relationships? Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that just like there are predators and prey in the animal kingdom, there is predators and prey in the spiritual kingdom. And there are predators and prey in the human family, okay? There are some people who are born to eat and there are some people who are born to be eaten. If you have no control over your emotions, if you have no control over your insecurities, if you're a slave to your delusions, then more than likely you will be somebody's food at some point in your life. You will be devoured either by your spouse, your family members, the government, friends, it doesn't matter. You have to learn to take responsibility 
or protecting yourself. The world is a ghetto. The world is not safe. Wendy Williams got with a dude from Brownsville. And I'm not saying all people from Brownsville are bad. No. But she liked hood guys, men with a little edge to them, which is understandable. Fine. But, you know, in that world, Wendy Williams is food. Here you have an insecure, beautiful woman with lots of money who has addiction issues, who doesn't like other women. Like, you know, she was food out here. And I don't see her, you know, totally as a victim because, again, um, I think that she wants to or she wanted to. I'm not sure what she's doing now. But I think at some point she wanted to destroy herself to punish Kevin for betraying her. From what I read um, in an article, it was like Wendy almost died at some point of alcohol poisoning. It seems like Wendy was in so much pain that no one or nothing could console her but Kevin. Kevin Sr., her ex-husband, not her son. I think her mom would have been able to help, but, you know, I don't think Wendy wants to be around her family because then she can't drink and smoke and do whatever she does to indulge in her addictions and to mask her insecurities. I feel like um, Wendy would think that she was being judged by her family because from what it looks like, uh, Wendy's parents had very high standards for her children. And Wendy's lifestyle seems to be completely different from her parents' lifestyle. Her parents seem to be very square, simple, clean-cut, suburban type. And she was in the clubs, in the hood, partying for whatever reasons. Um, and so I don't think that Wendy's lifestyle is compatible with what her parents wanted for her anyway. So she doesn't want to be around them. You know, when she was visiting them, she could have easily passed her sister her phone number or her son her phone number. Like, right on camera, here's my number. What was stopping her from doing that? Here's my phone. Take down my number. What's the issue? A part of me feels like Wendy did not want to be contacted because she was wallowing in her own self-pity. Again, if I sound unsympathetic or lacking compassion for Wendy, that's not the case. I was actually very upset. I was crying during the documentary at some point when she took off her wig, when she was with Black China, when she was sitting in a restaurant looking very alone with that fake publicist. It was devastating to see her that way. Um, she seemed just like she was done with life in general. It was heartbreaking to see her that way. But what's the solution? One of the solutions is for Wendy to first stop doing drugs and drinking, of course. But she also has to change her perspective on herself, on her life, on her relationships, about her value. Change her perspective on things. Once she does that, I think it will help her to heal. Melody went through something similar as um, Wendy Williams did. But because Melody had a different perspective about her value, as a human being, she moved differently. Melody was left to be a single mother of four children who filed bankruptcy. Her husband had a baby with his mistress who was disrespecting her publicly. Yet Melody did not crumble and fall the way that Wendy has. And it doesn't mean that Melody is better than Wendy or stronger than her per se. It just means that Melody's perspective about life and relationships and her value as it pertains to these things is way different than Wendy's. If you want to get over heartache, change your perspective. If you want to fix your health, change your perspective. If you want a better life for yourself, change your perspective. Change the way you think about yourself. Change the way you think about the people around you, your relationship to them, what they're here for, what you're here for. Like, I looked at Wendy Williams' natal chart and I can see why she has some challenges when it comes to the way she thinks and her moods. Um, I'm going to get into that tomorrow when I post uh, her astrological chart to the channel. But I understand that sometimes you cannot think your way out of a chemical imbalance. I get it, right? But I, I bet you, once Wendy started changing the way she thought about herself as a human being, as a woman, as an icon in our culture, once she changed her perspective on those things, that will help facilitate to the, uh, the, the healing process. Because in astrology, if you think about it, Mercury is also the planet of pharmacology, right? And pharmacology is with medicine. And Mercury is the planet of thinking communication. Sometimes your thoughts are the medicine or the poison. The way you think about yourself can poison you or it can cure you, all right? So in summary, um, I do think that, you know, Kevin is partially responsible for whatever happened with Wendy, what she's going through right now, her depression. But I think Sharina Hudson is more so responsible in a sense that um, Wendy was competing against her. And once Sharina won the competition by having Kevin's baby per se, I don't think she won, but that's just in Wendy's mind. She won the competition by having a baby by her husband, in a sense, and now getting money and alimony and child support, you know, to take care of the side baby. Um, Wendy's judgment of herself based on Kevin's actions is what broke her down, right? So, and not to compare Melody again, 
No matter what Martel said about Melody, Melody did not believe him. She was completely focused on her goals. She didn't believe none of the naysayers, none of the haters. His mistress, she didn't believe anything. She did not allow him to break her down psychologically. Wendy was different. She was already broken when she met Kevin. So the disrespect and the lack of regard for Wendy's, you know, well-being, being her feelings, her, her life, her happiness in general, it substantiated or corroborated the way that Wendy already felt about herself, right? Um, it seems like without her career and her TV show, Wendy has absolutely nothing. And the universe is forcing her to heal that wound by taking her show from her. You're not going to be able to hide your insecurities behind the show, behind your money, behind your fame, behind your wit. I'm going to take everything from you to force you to love yourself with absolutely nothing. I think that, you know, Wendy may have thought that the love that people have for her was conditional, was based on her ability to take care of them, to give them money, um, to make them laugh, to make them look good, right? Don't embarrass me. Be a role model for your community. Be a role model for your family. I think that Wendy never felt unconditional love before. Or she didn't believe that she was loved unconditionally by her parents because of the way they treated her as a child. I don't think they had malicious intent, but they could have been a bit heavy handed when it came to the way they treated her um, or the way they disciplined her in a sense. So I think that Wendy felt like she had to earn people's love by being funny and charming and successful and the star of the show and a good time and, you know, paying her men's bills. I think she was taking care of um, Eric B. She was dating him and she let him ruin her credit. So she probably felt like her value was based on her ability to provide for people, her money, her status, her fame, her success. It wasn't because of her alone. And she's finding out that it's not the case. You can lose everything, your health, your money, your looks, your show, your success, your marriage, your everything. And people will still love you for who you are. I hope that she understands that. I hope at some point she embraces that. Even though Kevin may have been using her and that would have been the reason why he was loyal to her. I hope she understands that her audience, her fans, they love her because of who she is. Um, they love her because she is a trailblazer. She's very talented. She's funny, witty. She's smart. She's an inspiration for many people, with or without her money. Like she became Wendy Williams not because she grew up in a rich household with, you know, with parents who fed her with a silver spoon. That wasn't the case. Wendy worked hard for everything that she has. So people respect her just off of that alone. So I'm hoping that at some point in her healing process, she realizes that she is loved and beloved regardless of what she has, how she looks, how much money she makes, and how successful she is. I hope that, you know, at some point before her father passes away, that he can make her understand that, that we love you anyway, no matter what you're going through, no matter how much you're suffering, you know, we're proud of you as our daughter. Not because you're Wendy Williams, a celebrity, the superstar, the, the wealthy woman, but because of you as a human being. We value you as a human being. And so, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. I look forward to reading your feedback. Do you guys think that Kevin or Sharina is more responsible for Wendy's mental breakdown? Wendy's responsible too, but who in your eyes is the reason why Wendy completely took a turn for the worse? Was it Kevin or was it Sharina? Again, remember, Wendy said she missed her family. She misses Kevin still, her husband and her son. So it wasn't that bad to her, whatever she was going through, right? In that marriage. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. I look forward to getting your feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon.